Hi friends, we haven't had a video with more or less serious projects for a long time. I know you missed the good old days and so today there will be a long, boring and uninteresting video during which we will assemble a stabilized voltage mains pulse power supply with a soft start and a short circuit protection. I needed this source for the next project, which I hope will be released soon. The source is planned for an output voltage in the range from 24 to 30 volts and a power of about 240 to 250 watts, but the circuit can easily give more. In the description of the video, as always, there will be an archive of the project with boards and a circuit. So download and assemble to your heart's content, it's free. I will note that there are small differences on the board and in the circuit, but they aren't significant and don't affect the operation of the source in any way. But before I do that, I would recommend a PCB manufacturing service from our partner NextPCB. This is a huge factory that can manufacture printed circuit boards of any complexity and size according to your drawings. To do this, you just need to upload the project Gerber files to the company website, select the necessary options, pay for the order and receive factory boards of high quality. There are many available options for solder mask colors, board thickness and coating. A convenient Gerber viewer will allow you to carefully inspect the board for defects before sending it to production. With the next board, your projects will always be perfect. Link in the description. Now, let's get straight to the point. Here is the circuit of this power supply. This is main step-down pulse power supply made using a half-bridge topology. It powered from mains through a fuse and a thermistor which is designed to limit the charging current of the input capacitors at the moment the source is connected to mains. Then, we have mains filter. There is also varistor protection. When mains over voltage occurs, the varistor will open and burn out the fuse. Then the alternating voltage is rectified by the input rectifier and goes to the half-bridge capacitors. There are two electrolytic capacitors connected with a midpoint. This midpoint is connected to one end of the primary winding of the power transformer via a separating capacitor. The other end of this winding is connected to the midpoint of the half-bridge switches. The control system is built on an advanced SG3525PWM controller. The microcircuit operates at a frequency of about 48 kHz, but a small deviation is possible due to the spread of the nominal values of the timing chain. The specified resistor is responsible for the dead time. This is a small pause during which the inverter power transistor are closed. It is needed so that the control system has time to reliably close the first transistor by the time the other one opens. The capacitor on the eighth pin of the microcircuit is responsible for the smooth start. At the moment of starting the circuit, the PWM signal has a minimum duration. Then a smooth increase occurs, which eliminates the formation of shock currents on the transistors and the circuit starts smoothly and quietly. The 10th pin of the microcircuit is its protection input. If the voltage on this pin is more than 2.5 volts, the PWM controller will stop working and the inverted transistors will close. The circuit will go into protection. We have a simple trigger that works as a latch. The Spectified resistor included in the lower arm transistor source circuit is a current sensor or shunt. A short circuit at the circuit output leads to a sharp increase in current in both the secondary and primary circuits. In this case, a sufficient voltage drop about 1.5 volts is formed on the shunt to trigger the optics LED. This will open the octocoupler transistor and to the trigger latch input will come positive power voltage. The latch will operate and supply the positive voltage to pin 10 of the PWM microcircuit and it will immediately turn off. Moreover, to disable the protection, it isn't enough to remove the short circuit from the output. It is necessary to de-energize the power source completely by removing the plug from the socket, wait 5 to 10 seconds until the input capacitors are discharged, then turn it on again. The protection response current depends on the shunt resistance. The lower the resistance, the higher the protection current. Power for the control system is provided by a small-sized low-power mains transformer on the secondary winding of which the voltage is about 12 volts. I know many will say that there are a million other ways instead of mains transformers such as a pulse circuit, a version without transformer on a ballast capacitor, a self-powering winding. All this is good of course, but I have a lot of such small transformers, that's why I installed it. The solution is reliable, provides galvanic isolation, so everything is good. 
Then the alternating current from the transformer is rectified, stabilized by the linear stabilizer microchip 7812 and fed to the control circuit. The currents here are tiny so the linear stabilizer doesn't overheat. The output of the PWM microcircuit is loaded with a galvanic isolation transformer, the secondary windings of which control the inverter power transistors. The solution with the galvanic isolation transformer is very good. Since in addition to the sensible control of the transistors, if something happens to the latter, the high voltage will not reach the control system and will not burn it out. The output part of the circuit is a rectifier in the form of a 40 ampere dual diode assembly with a common cathode in a TO247 case. And then there is a choke and capacitors. The load resistor parallel to the output provides the discharge of the capacitors after disconnecting the source from mains. About the boards. The control circuit is assembled on a separate board using SMD components to save space. Note that there is one jumper on the control board and several more on the main one, and a couple of them are power ones. After complete assembly, high current polygons on the board must be reinforced with copper wire. Power transistors are installed on a common radiator. Depending on the type of transistor housing, it is necessary to isolate the transistor substrates from the radiator using heat conducting dielectric spacers and plastic bushings. The output rectifier will heat up the most and it needs a bigger radiator. Now about transformers and let's start with the power one. By the way, there is a snubber circuit on the primary winding and it must be calculated individually depending on the operating frequency of the circuit and the parameters of the transformer. That is why the components are marked with an asterisk. The transformer is wound on a W-shaped core from a computer power supply. The winding parameters, specifically in the case of my transformer, are now in front of you. First, the half of the primary winding is wound onto the bare frame. Then 5-6 layers of insulation are placed. In my case, this is a captain tape. Next, we wind the secondary winding entirely. But this winding consists of two equal half windings, which are wound together for maximum identity. After that, we insulate again and wind the second half of the primary winding and put insulation on top. Next, it is necessary to phase the halves of the secondary winding to form a midpoint, which is the output ground. To do this, supply connect to the beginning of one half winding to the end of the other. The beginnings are indicated by dots on the circuit. Then we connect the end of the first half to the primary winding to the beginning of the second half of the primary winding. The resulting middle point isn't connected anywhere. Next, we assemble the transformer, tighten and if necessary glue the halves of the core and then solder it into the board. To be honest, a transformer from a regular computer power supply can be used in this circuit without any rewinding, but the board needs to be modified a little. I like winding transformers, so forgive me for making life difficult. The output choke isn't critical. Can have an inductance of 8 to 12 microhenry, 15 amps, can be wound on a ring of powdered iron or a ferrite rod. A correctly assembled source doesn't need adjustment and starts up immediately. The output voltage in my case is slightly higher than the calculated 24 to 26 volts, but this isn't critical. Note that it is stable and doesn't sag under load. Short circuit protection also works correctly. Let me remind you that the project archive with the diagram and printed circuit boards as well as links to purchase some components for this project can be found in the description. The video is coming to an end, don't forget to rate it, share with friends, comment with constructive criticism or support the author with a kind word. Now I say goodbye until we meet again, with you as always, Voskasian TV.